So uh, we gonna recap first uh, what we uh, uh, what we just talked last uh, last Tuesday. Okay, we talked about uh, again about the current that flows inside uh, a doped uh, semiconductor. Okay, or even intrinsic semiconductor. So we talked about two kinds of current or two types of currents: the drift current, which is caused by an electric field. So you have, let's draw here, you have a sample of silicon, any type or B type, let's assume it's any type, and you just connect it to a battery like this, then a current will flow. Okay. Uh, because uh, the any type material in this case is just a resistor. Okay. And we drive it the sigma for that resistor, it's uh, Q mu n, uh, Q mu n, I just forgot what it was, what it was, Q mu n, yes, yeah, Q mu n, n. Okay, this was the sigma, sigma n in that case. And for B type, we have some something very similar. Sigma B is equal to Q, the electronic charge, mu p and multiplied by b that is the density of the holes okay and we said that j the drift current density and we usually uh, express the current in terms of j not i because we don't want to depend on the geometry or we don't want to include the geometry in our equations okay so Jn is equal to J, I'm sorry, J total is equal to Jp plus Jn. So it's equal to Q mu P, P plus mu N, N multiplied by sigma is the electric field on that sample. And the electric field can simply be calculated using the voltage across the sample if this is a voltage V and we know that the length of this sample, for example, L, then epsilon capital, which is electric field, is equal to V over it. And we take some example for this. And we have also a diff something called the fusion current, which happens with, if you have, for a, again, an example of silicon, if you have excess of, uh, for example, the carriers in, in one place than another, so for example, if any changes in of X, it changes with X in that way here. So at X equal to zero, at that point, we have more uh, electrons than, for example, at X equal to L. Here is X equal to L. So a flow of electrons will move from the part that has larger, uh, carrier density to the parts of the sample that has lower carrier density. Okay, and again, we have uh, Jn and Jb, and we say that Jn is equal to Q dn, and dn is a constant for the material. It's called the diffusivity or the diffusion constant, dn by dx, and we say that uh, dn by dx is the derivative is a gradient, okay? The change, the rate of a change of, uh, of the carrier density in with uh, x, and if this dn by x is larger, then you will have larger current. Larger means you have bigger difference between the density at some location and another location. And Jb is something similar, but with minus, and we say that the minus will be canceled out when we make, when we calculate the actual dB by dx, okay? Because the current is actually moving in the way of the negative slope, okay? Of dB by dx. So the, 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 the minus will be canceled out. And G total is just the summation of both just sum them, uh, sum them together or add them together. And finally, we said that there is something called 
Einstein relation, which, which relates two different phenomena to each other. We said that these phenomena, these two phenomena, the drift current and the diffusion current are just two different, completely different uh, physics phenomena, but they have some relation. To, we can relate them to each other. And we say that D over mu, and mu, remember, is the mobility that came from the drift uh, current, of the drift current, or the drift, the, 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 the carriers that are drifted based on the electric field. And ZD is the diffusivity. It's for the diffusion. So this is for the, diffu for the diffusion of current. And this is for the drift of the carriers is equal to constant. And this constant is just, it's, it's constant at the same temperature. And it's equal to KT over Q. K is what is man constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and the Q is a, char, uh, is a unit of charge of the electron. Okay, good. Now, I'm gonna use these basics in order to discover the physics of a very interesting device called the B-in junction. And what is B-in junction? B-in junction is basically like what we say, B-in. So we have a sample of P, like this. Silicon doped with boron, for example. So it forms a B-type uh, silicon connected to a sample of N, another silicon sample doped with phosphorus. So you bring this and bring this and just attach them to each other. Of course, in reality, we are not doing that. We are not, you know, dope this separately and have another sample separately and just close them. To, no, we do that with the same silicon. If you have the same sample, you dope some part with N, some part with B, so that when you dope these in different locations, at some, at some point, you will have this contact. That's a different story, okay? But let's assume that we can do that. And of course, we can do that. We can have a sample of silicon uh, doped with N and a sample of, P, uh, of silicon doped with P or phosphorus atoms, uh, sorry, donor at acceptor atoms to form a B type and just attach them to each other. So they have some contact, some junction between them. So that's they call it B in junction. So what is gonna happen with this if we just attach two uh, different dope the silicon, one with B and one with N to each other. So we're gonna give first the overall uh, result. Then we're gonna explain why this happened. So let's see, we, we talked about if you have just a sample of N alone or sample of P alone, and you connect it to some voltage source like this. This will behave just like resistor R with some sigma Q in, in uh, I'm sorry, Q in uh, mu in. Okay, just like any resistor. So the car, if we draw the current versus V, it will be something like this. And the relation is just Ohm's law. And the slope here is just one over R, the resistor value of this sample. And how we can determine this resistor value? Very simple, we know that R is equal to rho, the resistivity of the material, multiplied by the length of the material over the cross section. The length of the material. And if we draw it in 3D, we have some area here. So this is the cross section. And what is rho? Simply 
in that case, this is row n because this is n type. It's a Q. I'm sorry. Uh, let's, let's erase this. Very sorry about this. Yes. So it's it's one over sigma n. So it's one over Q mu n n. That's why we calculated last time or drive with last time an equation for rho n or sigma n. So that when we have uh, a piece of n type or b type and we have a voltage source on it, we can simply calculate the, the resistance to know the relation between the current and the voltage. Very good. It's just a resistor. Now for this new mysterious device, which is B attached to N, if we do the same, we have some very different characteristic, okay? So let's assume we have this B N, and we, Uh, connect uh, some voltage source like this and somehow we could you know draw the characteristic remember uh, from yesterday's lab we could using the telescope draw the, the the characteristic of the resistor which is ohms low using automatically using the telescope so assume that we will do the same with this, you know, new device that we have, B connected to N or attached attach to N. What we're gonna see? We, we will not see something like ohms low, like any resistor, no. We'll see, we will see something new to us, something that we, we see for the first time, something not linear, basically. We will see something like this. This is I, this is V. Okay, and I is the current that goes through this V in a junction, and this is V, okay, is a V, is a voltage across this V in junction. So we'll see something like this. This is very different, okay? So there are two differences, basically. The first one, this is, not linear. Here it was linear. So N alone, B alone, connected to a voltage source, it's a linear relation. It's just a resistance. But P with N together, it will give you, in the positive sides at, uh, at least, some not linear, non-linear relation. Actually, it's exponential relation. It's very fast increase of current with very small increase in voltage. It's exponential. And the second difference, to some extent, this current here is very, very, very small. Okay at least for the devices that we are dealing with in this course. For, there are being junctions that has, you know, relatively large current in, uh, in the negative side here. But for the ones in our course, no. It will be very small. Okay? So, but here, we have still voltage and current. Yeah, it's, it's negative, but we have. So there will be a current, but it will reverse its direction. But here, no, we don't have a current. And if we go to the first lecture, okay, and we see this, you know, this amplification stuff, I don't know how to navigate, yes. If we remember here, to construct an amplifier, we needed something that doesn't conduct in the negative side, but only conduct with the positive side, with the positive, side, with the positive values of the input for the applied voltage. So now we are close to what we, uh, to one of our applications. We will not do that with the, with the beam junction, by the way. 
but the BN junction will lead us to another device that can do that for us, can, that can do this, you know, this kind of relation to us. So we can make amplifier, okay? Although the, the BN junction has many, many applications, as you will see, many applications. Okay, so this is the overall uh, idea. Now we're gonna delve into this being a junction and see why we have such a kind of behavior. Okay, the physics, I mean. So let's delve in. We will ask two questions basically, and we will try. We will try to answer them. And these two questions basically is why we have such thing. So the first question. Let me draw with another color. The, uh, our basic one. Uh, it, that's fine. So question one. Yes. How the charge carriers, which is just electrons and the holes, redistribute themselves after uh, you know the being junction is formed okay so we're gonna answer this first then we have another question and the answer of the first one will lead us to the second one. Or let's let's defer the second one and see see the answer of the first one first. That will be much better. Okay, let's answer this. So, just before connect. Let's draw a big one here. So let's imagine this is the moment, just the moment of connecting them together. Here is we have the N, and here is we have the B. B type and N type. So at the moment of connection, we have here carriers, we have electrons in N, and N means the electron carrier density in the N type. And we have minority carriers, which is the holes B in. So this is higher than this because the density here is higher than the density of the holes. So in N is the majority, B in is the minority. And for the B, we have similar stuff. We have PP, now the majority is holes, and the minority is electrons, N, P. And it's not necessary that this guy is equal to this guy and this guy is equal to this guy. It's not necessary at all, okay? This is just at the moment of connection. Now, after making, forming the junction, this will change now. You remember, if, for the diffusion current. If we have two areas, one area with excess, excessive uh, or larger density than another area, so there will be a current or the carriers will flow from the area of larger density to the area of lower density, right? And that's, that's what we have here. So let's do that with another color. So we have, for, for the holes, for example, we have here excessive or larger density, and we have here lower density. So we'll have holes going through the, the junction into the end type. And something very important here. Remember before the junction, this was a material I mean, a, a sample, you know, a piece of sample that has neutral uh, charges. I mean, N equal to B, 
or uh, I'm sorry, yes, is uh, mostly equal to negative. And the same also for here. So for any charge that leaves the P and go to M, it will leave behind uh, a negative ion, which is a boron. So at the junction here, we will have boron ions, negative acceptor ions, boron whatever. There are many uh, atoms that has three electrons in its last shell, so we can dope the silicon with, so to have a B-type B material. One of them is boron. So again, we have higher carrier density, higher hole density in the B, lower hole density in the N. So the holes will distribute themselves into the B, into the N material or N type material. And for each hole that leave the B material, the B sample into the N sample, there will be a negative charge or negative ion, we can say. Basically because the material itself, the B type has left has lost has 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 lost one uh, for example one uh, one most of the charge so it the the net will be one extra negative charge after leaving so for any for any atom if any atom leave uh, loses one one electron out of the out of the atom out of the material then this material will be uh, with net charge of one most of or most of ion okay so uh, for any hole that leaves this material to this material, there will be an extra negative charge or neg extra negative ion. And we have the same or similar stuff for hole for electrons. So electron here, let's draw them with a different color. So electron here has a higher density in the n type than the electron here the B type. So the electron will distribute themselves, will move from the N type material to the B type material in that way. And again, since this material, the N type here, are losing electron, it will be more positive. So for each electron that leaves the N type to B type, a positive ion will be created. Which is a phosphorus ions. Because again, acceptor atoms usually turn into a negative and uh, phosphorus atoms or donor atoms usually turn into positive ions. And why this happens around the junction? Because Basically, intuitively, the carriers that are near the junction are the, the ones that move the first because they are very close to the, to the other material. Okay, that's good. Now another question. So let's, let's conclude this first. Let's write this first, what happens. So number one, for each... Uh, Since we have excess holes in B type, then N type diffusion current of holes will be created from P type to N type. Same for electrons, but for but from N type to B type. But remember, this is the direction of the of the carriers, the electrons, but the current the diffusion current of the electrons will still be from the B to N because as usual, currents 
move in the direction of positive charges, but negative or opposite to the direction of the negative charges. So both currents are the same way from B to M. Good. Third observation, each hole leaves P type, leave behind a positive, and yes, I'm sorry, a negative. A negative ion or acceptor atom, acceptor ion in P type. Near or close to the junction. That's very important. Again, four here, same four electrons, but those guys will leave positive ions or positive donor atom uh, ions near the junction. Good. That's very good. Now, another question based on that. I don't know if we have, yeah, we have. Does that behavior continue forever? Basically, no. Just but remember, this is a circuit now. We have a circuit, we have a device. But this device is not connected to anything. And based on these four observations, we found that we have two currents, two currents moves in the same direction from B to N. One comes from the movement of holes from B to N. And one comes from the movement of electrons from N to B, but the current again is against the, or opposite to the direction of the electrons. So it's again from B to N. But this is open circuit. These two terminals here are not connected to anything. So there must be something that will equalize those two currents in the opposite direction. So this will not continue forever. So what's really happening here? So whenever you have two uh, electrodes, we can say one with uh, negative and one with positive, there will be electric field. There will be a potential. And that's what exactly what we have here. So let's draw this again here. So after studying or analyzing the movement of the diffusion, we found that at some point we have negatives on that side, negative ions, and the ions cannot move. They are not contributing to the current. And the positive ions on the other side. So it's like if you have two electrodes, one with negative, and one with positive. Then you will have electric field. And the electric field uh, direction is usually from, is all the time, <laughs> not usually from positive to negative, something like this. So we have electric field in that way. So the answer here is no, basically. Because the newly uh, generated or, yeah, yeah, generated electric field at some point. So for each hole that leaves B to N, a new uh, negative charge will be created, or ion will be created. And it's the same for electrons that moves from N to B. 
So this will create for the for the first uh, hole that moves from here to here, and the electron that moves from here to here will have two ions with a let's say weak electric field. Good. Then another ion, another hole moves from N to B, and another electron moves from uh, N to B. So another two ions created. So this will strengthen the first electric field, the first created electric field, and so on. So as we move, as electrons move more and more from B to N, and the electrons holes move from uh, P to N, and as more electrons move from N to B, this electric field, uh, these ions will be increased in number. So the electric field will become stronger and stronger. And at some point, this electric field will cancel any motion from the B to N or from N to B. And why? Basically, if you have electric field in that way, in that direction, okay, the electric field usually, as we remember from the uh, two lectures ago, when we started by the motion of, ele of electrons in, the, in free space, we said that if you have electron in free space and you have, uh, for example, so if you have electron like this and we have electric field like this, then this electric field will, ma will make the electron to move in the opposite direction. Of the electric field or basically if you have two electrodes one negative one positive this is the direction of the electric field so the electrons moves moves toward the positive electrodes that's basically attraction right and will be expelled or pushed away from the negative electrode remember that our electro electrons now is moving in that direction from n to be. But this electric field now, when I move them from P to N, or you can say in just in deep physics, if an electron now tries to move from here to here, it will find this negative electrode in front of it. So it will be expelled by this negative electrode, okay? And it's the same for the holes that was moving from, if you have now a positive charge here, this positive charge move toward the negative electrode away from the positive electrode. So remember, uh, holes were, were moving from P to N in that way. But the electric field one and push them in the opposite way from N to B. So at some point, you know, this will, this will, this will cancel out. Or the, the hole that was moving from P to N will be expelled by this positive electrode. Okay. So we can say that the created, now let's, let's do it do it in more details. For each electron hole uh, or electron, yeah, move, movement from N type, P type, this is for any type, this is for B type. To the other side, two ions created. These two ions will generate or create electric field. Okay, let's create another page to continue with this.
okay? So, as the electric field increases, the motion or the movement, or we can say better, as the electric field increases, less and less uh, electrons or holes will move between the junction sites. If we're gonna model this, remember that electric field generates drift current. So it's like in the beginning we have diffusion current, then the electric field will uh, increase in value as the time goes, and this electric field will, will generate drift current opposite to the current of the diffusion. Opposite to the diffusion current that we have when we attach both uh, samples together. And as the time goes, this uh, drift current will increase more and more until some point it will be equal to the diffusion current and they will both cancel each other. Okay, so if we're gonna draw, just this is just, you know, uh, a made up <laughs> a chart or plot, okay? If we imagine that uh, the diffusion current is something like this, increases, I'm sorry, this was the exchange of the diffusion current with time, or this was, I'm sorry, this was, let's draw first the electric field. If the electric field with time is increasing in that way, then the diffusion current will decrease in the opposite way. So it will start very high, then it will go down, down, down until it reaches zero when the E or the epsilon reaches its maximum value. Okay. So this is what's actually here. Let's, re let's recap this. So in the beginning, holes will move from the high density of holes, which is B type, to low, low density of holes, which is M type. And they will leave uh, negative ions. Then whole, uh, electrons will move from N to B, from the high density to, to low density, and will leave positive ions. These negative and the positive ions will generate or create electric fields. This electric field will generate or create a drift current. This drift current is uh, opposite in direction to the diffusion current that we originally have. After some time, as more electrons and holes move between the two sides, this uh, electric field will, will be high enough to generate a drift current that is equal and opposite in direction to the original diffusion current. And at some point, they will cancel each other so that the net current is zero. Which, we, which, 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 which is the thing that we are expecting because we have open circuit. This device, this B and N samples is open circuit. So we are not expecting to see any current. And this is the physics behind why we shouldn't see any current. Okay? Even though there is a movement of, of electrons and holes. Because this movement will create electric fields that will create current opposite to the original movement. Okay? So this is basically uh, what's happening if you attach somehow a B or, 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 or you create a junction between a B-type material and N-type material. In that particular case, since we have 
two terms that are equal to each other, which is the diffusion current and the, uh, and the, and the drift current, we say that this P in junction is under equilibrium. So this is called, or what we just explained, when we have open circuit like this, and this is B and this is M and this is B, okay? This is called equilibrium. the equilibrium condition. And the equilibrium condition is so easy, so simple. You have B, you have M, somehow you create a junction between them and leave this newly created material or sample open circuit. Then you will have equilibrium. Equilibrium means, or you will have some motion of in the beginning, but at some time, this motion will, be, will stop because, you know, as we said, the drift current opposite to the diffusion current and so on and so forth. Okay. And at, the, at, at equilibrium, you will have a negative ion here on the B side and the positive ion, ions on the N side. You will have some electric field from positive to negative. And if you have electric field, you have also potential, V. We will call it V naught, and we will, we will determine it. Okay? And as we said, this, uh, this area here has negative ions, and the ions cannot, uh, cannot uh, contribute to the current. They are static. They are just in their places. They are not moving. So this area here called depletion region. Depletion region. It's an area with no uh, with no carriers, with no holes or electrons only uh, ions and ions cannot uh, contribute to the current. So let's now study the B in the junction in equilibrium condition. So again, in equilibrium condition, let's draw this again. I'm very sorry for this. Anyways, you have uh, the N here, the B here, okay, you have uh, positive ions on that side, negative ions on that side. You have electric field in that way, in that direction, and you have a voltage. And you have some area here called the depletion region, which has no carriers, has no carriers. This is in equilibrium condition. Okay, so let's make some analysis in this equilibrium condition. We said that at equilibrium, Gn, uh, J diffusion will equal to J drift. That's what we said. We said that you have two currents and they will cancel each other. So let's, for example, study the case for P, uh, uh, JB. For, for example, example, for JB. You will have JB diffusion equal to JB drift. So Q dB, dB by dx is equal to JB drift, which is uh, Q, I always forget this, I don't know why, Q 
QB uh, uh, QB yeah yeah sigma sigma electric field sigma is QB mu P okay that's good let's go this lens here for example x1 and this point here x2 so for example this is you have here uh, axis x okay so uh, along this axis we just mark it this the end or the start of the depletion region as x1 and the end of the depletion region as x2 that's it so between x1 and x2 the bridge region no carriers is here only ions okay q is will, will go with q they will just cancel each other and then uh, so you have uh, db and let b to come here and just go uh, make the x to go there so db over b this will make the integration easier equal to b i'm sorry because we moved b already equal to mu b epsilon dx now make the integration the integration is here equal to the integration of that guy it's just to make this okay good db is a constant will go out mu b is also a constant so db integrating integration db by over b equal to mu p Integration epsilon dx. We don't know how uh, epsilon or the electric field is changing. What is the relation between? We don't know the relation between epsilon and x. We can drive it, and there is example in the book that drive it so easily. But let's assume that we don't know it, and we even don't want to know it. Okay. So first. What is the uh, limits of this integration? You have x1 to x2, and at x1 and x1 here, the b is actually. I'm sorry. This is this is the integration for x for x1 to x2, and for b we should write the corresponding densities at x1 and x2. At x1 the density this is x1 here the density is pn and x2 we are here the density is pp so this is the integration limits okay and again we don't know the relation between epsilon and x so let's say that epsilon is equal x is actually the function of x but we don't know this function but we know that the voltage is actually minus the integration epsilon dx. And if this is x1 to x2, this will give us the uh, minus vx2 minus minus, it will be positive vx1 so it's like vx1 minus vx2 which is vx uh, or v12 whatever v12 for example this voltage from negative to positive which we will call v naught so this guy in here although we don't know it but we we will call it V naught, VBI. And actually we can, you know, measure experimentally or even theoretically V naught. And this integration is very easy, it's just lin. 
Okay, it will be lim. Uh, yeah, lim b. Yeah, so d b. This would be lim or log, whatever you call it. It's log for the base of, of the natural base uh, e. So I, I use I usually call it lim. Uh, d b over d n equal to mu p multiplied by v naught. This V naught is not an external V naught. There is no voltage source here. This is naturally, you know, created voltage. Sometimes you call it built-in voltage or VBI. So we can also say that this is equal to mu P VBI. It's just the synonyms, V naught or VBI, whatever. When I was teaching this course before, I usually call it VBI, built-in voltage. In the book, the, he, in the author usually, in the reserves book, he usually call it V naught, that's fine. Use whatever you want. Okay, so from here V naught or VBI is equal to db over mu p len bb over bn that's very good can we do further can we do further simplification we said that d over mu from einstein relation is actually constant equal to kt over q, which is 26 millivolt at t equals 300 degree Kelvin. Or what we call thermal voltage, Vt. And so this guy can be removed and we can put Vt or kt over q instead of it. We know that Pb is equal to uh, PB is equal to approximately N A. And we know that PN multiplied by NN is equal to N I square. And NN is approximately equal to N D. So BN N D equal to N I square. So BN is equal to n i square over n d. So this can be simplified further. VBI equal to V no or whatever. Uh, VT or KT over Q len n a n d over n i square. That means if you know the temperature, if you know the doping in, in the N type material, the doping in uh, B type material, you can determine VBI very easily. Just, you know, plug in the numbers in that equation and you will get the natural voltage in the junction or around the junction, I'm sorry. Okay. And this is at, again, equilibrium condition. So at equilibrium, no current will flow, basically because we have an open circuit. And we explain the physics why uh, the currents will, the current will be, the net current is zero because we have two currents, diffusion and, and the drift. They will cancel each other because they are in opposite directions. And based on that, we, may, we drive some, you know, very nice formula for the built-in voltage, okay, which we call VBI or V naught, and it's basically dependent on the doping in both sides, both sides N and B, N type and B type, and the, the temperature. Okay, this is very, you know, uh, this is what can be, you know. Uh, the basic analysis or the basic physics of equilibrium condition. So before continue, any questions for, so far? Uh, 
Uh, looking good so far. Good. So let's give some, you know, some basic uh, observations on equilibrium condition. So some observations here. Let's write them in red. Yeah, or some questions. First, question here. Is there, we know that there is electric field around the junction. Is there any electric field outside the depletion region? And the answer is no, as usual. Okay. Why is this? We will go to something called Gauss's law. Gauss's because of Gauss's law. So Gauss is a very famous scientist, maybe 200 years ago. He made some very nice uh, law, we can say, that the electric field on a surface is proportional to the net charge inside or enclosed in that surface. So if you have a surface that in, uh, in, uh, enclosed no charge or, or a material with no charge equal to zero, then you will have no electric field. Okay, so to prove that, basically we draw the, the junction. Here we have positives on the inner side. Here we have negative. And I note here that the, the total charge in that area, which is positive, is equal to the negative charge in that area. And here we know that this is neutral, no, no net charge in the B type, positive is equal to negative. This is what we studied last time and even before last time. And again, in that part, this white part is, equal, is also neutral. So if we take any surface like this, And we want to know, assume it's uh, in three dimension, because this is not a surface, because we have two, just the two dimension. So it's in it, just to assume we have, you know, uh, we completed the, the drawing like this. So, yeah. Okay. So if we take a surface like this, we're gonna first, you know, calculate the net charge inside the surface. If the net charge is zero, then the electric field is zero. Okay, good. So the net charge is equal to, it's, let's divide it. So we have this first piece. And this piece is belonging to the the neutral region of the inner type and it has zero charge, zero columns. Then we have this area, let's do it with another color, which is a depletion region. And again, we said that the number of uh, negative uh, or the dentist or the charge of the negative, the net charge of negative ions is equal to the net charge of the positive ions. So again, this is also zero. Then we have a third. I don't know if we have more colors here. Mm. Yes, we have some colors. Let's take this. Then we have this area here, which belongs to the neutral part of the B type material. And again, it has zero charge. So the net charge is equal to zero plus zero plus zero, which is, which is how much? Which is zero, of course. Okay, so let's go back to this, which is zero. 
So outside the depletion region is equal to zero. So the electric field is only enclosed in the depletion region. No uh, electric field outside the depletion region. Okay, that's good. We have another observation about the equilibrium condition or the junction at equilibrium condition. It's draws in very fast. So draw. We have some observation, two important observations as well regarding equilibrium condition. Number one. We just proved that the electric field outside the depletion region is zero. So if the electric field outside the depletion region is zero, so there is no electric field there. And if you don't have electric field, you don't have a voltage. So you only want to have one voltage, one built-in voltage, one created voltage, which is the built-in voltage in the depletion or within the depletion region. So VBI, is localized in the depletion region and no other voltages around. Why? Because the electric field equal to zero outside the depletion region. That's why we make this, you know, very small proof of why we have no electric field outside the bridge using Gauss's law, which is very simple. If you have a surface, the surface includes no charge or net charge equal to zero, then the electric field is zero. The second observation is that, yeah. Uh, remember that VBI is dependent for a function or whatever of the doping on both sides. And we said that our doping is usually from 10 to the power 15 to the 10 to the power 17. This is the traditional conventional doping dynasties that we have for our applications, okay? And uh, NI is dependent on the temperature only and the, the silicon, the, the, the energy gap number. Assuming we are silicon, so we only we have only silicon, so we have only energy gap number, so which is the energy gap of, of silicon. So it's only dependent on temperature for silicon. So at 300 degree Kelvin, we know Ni, and we know the ranges for Nd and Na, at least as range. So we can calculate the range also for the VBI, okay? You can calculate VBI at Na equal to Nd equal to 10 to the power 15, and then you can calculate uh, Na, uh, VBI, uh, assuming that Na equal to Nd equal to the power 17, then you can know the range uh, of VBI from which to which. And, we will find that if, for example, you take the uh, 10 to the power 16 something like an average, you will find that VBI is usually or range is around uh, how much? Yeah, from 700 millivolt around to 800 millivolt. Yes, it's VBI is dependent on the temperature, the doping of Na and Nd. But for our, you know, conventional conditions, 
which has doping from 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power uh, 17 and at room temperature you can determine the range just to plug in the number for any dnmd as 10 to the power 15 and another time as 10 to the power 17. You will find that the range is between 700 millivolt to 800 millivolt. Okay, so uh, this is basically the equilibrium condition. We have only five minutes left. Uh, so we're going to continue next time with the other two conditions. So we, this is the first condition that we can operate or we can study the BN junction A. There are another two conditions, one of them is called the reverse reverse bias and the other one is called the forward bias and we're gonna you know explore these two other uh, uh, you know conditions for being junction in the next lecture so any questions so far